Okay, excellent. Well, welcome to today's free webinar on karmic law, everyone, and how it relates to finance. So I trust you all as excited as I am to get started. And uh, I thought that um, I would do this today just as a way of giving back to everyone and to all of you, especially during these trying times. So how are you all feeling today? Yeah, no worries, Jackie. And Jackie's feeling really good. Lisa, great, thanks. Shirley, good, ready for clearing. Yep, yeah, great to hear, Shirley. I certainly am as well. And Sarah's the solar storms are feeling heavy. Yeah, that, that's I've certainly heard about some of those. And uh, Fiona, well, thanks. So great to see you guys doing well. Okay, so now without further ado, let we'll get started. So just some housekeeping, everyone. Just make sure you get rid of all distractions and to take notes in a notebook. I find that handwriting is best. Have a glass of water handy for after the clearing and recordings will be available within 24 hours or so. So here's what you'll be learning today. You'll be learning the negative effects of karma and how you can completely transform it, that twisted negative energy to rapidly get what it is that you want. And the consequences of breaking karmic law and how you can avoid reaping any repercussions by learning how to deal with any possible karma in all areas of your life. How any remaining karma can lead to hard lockdowns or uh, mask mandates like we had um, microchipping like it's happened like in certain parts of the world and uh, why we've had wars as well like the Russia Ukraine one and also the Israel Hamas bombings and all that shit and even death and the steps you can take to avoid all of that and become very prosperous financially as well as every other area of your life and what you can do to stay within karmic law and the action steps necessary to release any karma to do what you love and change the world. So we'll start with karmic attachments and what they are and what do I mean. The Buddhists describe the law of karma like a wheel of incarnation. So Christians say that what we sow is what we, what we reap. Now, another way that you can say it is every action has a consequence, cause and effect, or like what goes around comes around. There's various ways that you can look at it. And that everything is karmically interconnected and must play out precisely as it happens. And what happens is we repeat our karmic lessons until we finally learn and shift the karma on what's going on. And ultimately, the law of judgment applies and is ultimately stored in the Akashic records. So basically, karma is a self-correcting system, in other words. And we actually choose our mission in advance, right before we come into the planet. Um, we create karmic imprints when we make choices which do not align with karmic law life mission or our sole purpose on the planet so karmic imprints are basically twisted energy patterns which are erratic and are created when we basically go against the flow of the universe and go against the flow um, of our own self and we also create karmic imprints when we go against the higher law of life liberty and property um, because as you can imagine, there is an order of creation and government which must be honoured, whether we like it or not. But as mankind is discovering, you can't do what you want when you feel like it, with no regard for consequences for others and the planet. There's always a price to pay. Because, well, really, we're free to do what we like, by and large. 
um, so long as it doesn't mess with life, liberty, or property. So, I mean, you can have your different beliefs, do your different things, so long as it doesn't interfere with those things. So this is why karmic law was put in place to protect the planet and its citizens, to give security and a peaceful and quiet life, and so that the wickedness and the evil does not run amok. And uh, and, Pat, and Yogananda himself had a lot to say about karma. So habits you cultivated in past lives have substantially created your physical, mental, and emotional makeup in this life. So, I mean, uh, whatever you committed in past lives will determine the life or the fact that you were born into, for example, and the path that um, that will be laid out. Whenever you are reborn, um, that, that karma, consisting of all your past thoughts and actions and habits, creates the physical form that you will have. Not only um, from your appearance, but your personality traits as well. So as you can imagine, um, well, if your past li um, lives have had darkness and some pretty bad shit in it, well, then, uh, then then that will translate, like, with your appearance, with your personality traits. And uh, and there would, there, there would be work that needs to be done. But when if your past lives are more pure, then that means that you'll be born into, like, a good family, have a more straightforward, easy life, and, uh, have, and of course, have um, your experience challenged like anyone else would, but just not to the same degree as someone else who... Had a, who did shitty things in their past life. So the universal law um, is that of action and reaction, cause and effect, sowing and reaping. In the course of natural righteousness, man, by his thoughts and actions, <laughs> becomes the arbiter of his destiny. Because at the end of the day, circumstances and people can drive someone to a breaking point and just to a negative or positive one. But ultimately, the, ultimately in the end, um, that person is the arbiter of their own destiny, as the thoughts and the actions were still their own either way. So it's certainly thought-provoking. So I've come, as you can imagine, if you're directing your thoughts and your actions in a, in a good way, well, then you can do a lot of good for the world. But if you do it in a very bad way, well, then it, that's when you'll do a lot of bad things. And then, of course, you have um, Sri Yuketswa. So Sri Yuketswa has a quote on this as well. So he mentions that beings with unredeemed earthly karma are not permitted after astral death to go to the high causal sphere of cosmic ideas, but must shuttle to and fro from the physical and astral worlds. So in all, what he's basically saying is, until you clean up um, all the karma and corruption within your DNA, then uh, you'll be forever um, um, linked to this physical world. So meaning that you'll, you'll need to continue the um, cycle of life and death so basically living your life until eventually dying then having your life review and then re um, before the masters and then basically reincarnating all over again and when the, we reincarnate until until we complete our mission until we clear out every last bit of our karma and buddha or two had a quote about karma as well but how, pe how people treat you is their karma. How you react is yours. So at the end of the day, we always have a choice. And we, and we can choose to um, create something better out of it or something worse. And, and so, I mean, uh, as you can imagine, well, like, well, like for example, if, if someone was being very rude to you, well, I mean, uh, if you reacted in a way where you just took it, well, then you're going to create karma because you didn't speak your truth and you allowed them to put their shit on you. But whereas if you tell, if you put them in their place and you tell and tell them not to do that shit and you set a boundary and you do that firmly, well, then that would be warranted, and then uh, you won't you won't create karma out of that, for example. 
And the, so the the Buddhists call the karmic cycle that we experience on the earth uh, the wheel of incarnation. What they teach is that our existence is a cycle of life, death, and rebirth and suffering. That that we are here to break free from and escape altogether. And the, the Holy Bible discusses the law of Moses and the Ten Commandments, which are the governing foundations of karmic law on the earth. So these laws are also used in our legal system and many secret societies, in fact. And uh, in the Freemason lodges, for example, like um, from how they've managed to um, to kind of infiltrate and uh, and uh, take over the, like the legal system, the me um, the medical and uh, all of that stuff. Um, they, um, they basically um, have used the Bible, and the Bible is the main book that they actually use. And so now let's take a look at the Ten Commandments. So the first commandment is, I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not have any strange gods before me. So, um, so of course, I mean, that, 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 that's pretty clear. So in, so in other words, um, uh, you don't like worship a false idol. So, like, not you, you don't worship like a celebrity or worship a golden statue or anything like that. Um, is ultimately when you're engaging in the energy of it, then you're creating karma. And the second one is, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. So, it means you don't mock or disrespect the name of the Lord and the name of God. And the third one is remember to keep holy Sabbath day. So in other words, make sure that you have that one rest day in each week um, and set that aside um, to keep holy for the Lord thy God and to remember him. And then the fourth one is honour thy father and mother. So meaning that you honour and you appreciate the two people that brought you into this world. And and so and so by honouring um your, the your physical mother and father on this planet, you you too will be able to honour your father and mother that's in heaven. And the fifth one is thou thou shall not murder. So um so this of course is not just limited to um physically doing it. Even if you're just lying in bed one day, for example, and you like um, are thinking of that you really wish that someone would be killed and you're engaging in that um, killing and murdering type of energy, because that, that too will create your karma as well. Now, obviously, we all have our moments where we get angry or like we don't, if someone has been a dick or whatever, but it's more when you're consumed by the energy of it. That makes sense. Um, and, and when and when you're not when you're not basically like um, dealing with it properly, and then the sixth one is thou shalt not commit adultery. So this isn't just limited to like um, to um, fucking somebody else. Um, oh, that's not your partner. Um, even um, and even like if you're still married or with someone that you you you're, that you fell out of love with, for example, that's also a form of adultery. Because, like, ultimately, adultery is when it's like um, when it's more lust, and when there's and when there's no love in it or anything like that. And then the seventh one is thou shalt not steal. So this, of course, is not just limited to like um, going into a store and taking something without paying for it. Um, you can also steal someone's time, steal someone's energy, someone's sovereignty, or anything else. So really, these laws, these Ten Commandments, are more um, saying to not engage in the energy of these. And uh, then eight, thou shalt not commit false witness against thy neighbour. So in other words, um, you, don't, you don't commit um, false accusations and you don't make up shit about someone that's not true. And then nine, thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's wife. So meaning, of course, that like you don't have sex with 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 someone else's partner, and um, unless unless of course like um both parties have agreed that it's okay, because otherwise you don't do that. 
And then the, the tenth one is thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods. So that, of course, meaning like um, you don't take um, what's your neighbor's, what isn't yours, and you and you don't and you don't have that jealousy in your heart. And so the fulfilled law of karma. So Christ, Buddha, Krishna, and the Kriya yogis, they all show that karmic law ultimately comes back to the following. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. So you love the Lord your God and you never lose that. And the second one, love your neighbor as yourself. So um, we're, in other words, we love our, our fellow our man and woman. And that there are three levels of karmic law to learn. So let's have a look at them. First one is universal higher laws of truth. So that, of course, is like the Ten Commandments and like um, on, and being in flow with the universe and ultimately which goes beyond all of us. And the second one is your inner truth. And so like your beliefs and like what, what you like to do and like more like your personal thing. And then the third one is your karmic truth. So this is where, like, you may feel comfortable doing something, but um, it, your particular purpose or something in you does not allow you to do that because it's not your calling and you're not meant to. So, like, for example, if you're called for healing work, but then, like, you try, like, creating a big business, you may find that even if you do clearings, activations and all, nothing ever works no matter what you do. But, but then, yeah, as soon as you go in the healing path, it works automatically type of thing. So, um, so what we have, and then what you have here is, like, a hierarchy of authority, um, which, which is the way that it's meant to be. Um, uh, so you have God source or like um, God up there and then you have the sovereign man and woman and then the government and then persons. So persons, of course, is like the masses and the government, of course, is like the leader, the ruler and the sovereign man or woman that's like that's like the people who can basically advise and tell the government what to do um due to this um let due to the level of like consciousness and uh, what they've built their level at and then of course god and source will always be the highest on the hierarchy of all so how do you release your karma must you work it out Okay, so um, uh, there are two ways that you can release your karma. First way is to work it out. So this is where you work out your karma by fully reaping the evil seeds of what you've sown. That is actions equals consequence. So for example, if you rip someone off in a business deal and you're going to deal with your karma by working it out, it would mean that like you would need to wait till someone swindled you. So, um, so then in other, in other words, you know exactly what it feels like. The problem is though, when you work out your karma, that will take lifetimes. The second one is to clear it out. And this is where you release your karma by listing and dealing with it and using codes and high level activations. So realizing that at the end of the day, it's just energy and it can be cleared and it can be shifted. So meaning that like you won't need to experience the full repercussions of what you would have, but where, but rather where you can make it right in other ways and in a better way. But this will release you from lifetimes of karmic consequences and enables you to avoid experiencing the full effects of your sin or karmic actions. Okay, so um, uh, how, how do we create karmic attachments? So our life is shaped by many factors. Let's have a dive into it. Our past experiences in this life, our parents' imprints and beliefs, our ancestral or past life imprints, impact of the mass mind in our region, our country, 
impact of the mass mine on the earth. And these create armor which needs to be released. So um, before we continue on, uh, just type in the text chat which of those you feel like you've created karma the most from. So whether it's been from like parents or whether it's been from like the region or like certain circumstances in your life or anything else like that. Andre Andreas, my parents. Uh, yep, and parents tend to be a very large factor in our karmic journey. Well, since really it's not just our karma we need to deal with, but our parents as well and our ancestral. Sachi parents. Jackie relationships, all. And Sharon uh, ancestral. Fiona, all of them, I'm not sure which holds a greater percentage. And that's that's all right, Fiona. So I'm um, I'm sure that if you tune in deeper, there may be one that holds a greater one, but otherwise that's all right. So Julia, AJJ. So um, I'm sorry, Julia, I'm not sure what you mean by that exactly. So maybe just confirm um, what you mean by that. And that... Up, uh, Julia. I'm oh, sorry. All. Oh, yeah. So just a typo. Yeah, that's all right. And uh, so we live by the law of cause and effect. Well, and ultimately, everything is interconnected on the energetic level. So we may appear to be separate, like in our bodies and, and all of that. But on the energy level, we're, we're one and the same. And we are all one with what we do. Okay, so that brings us to the next phase. Um, how is karma determined? Let's investigate. So by the Akashic Records. So um, who here has heard of the Akashic Records or who hasn't? Type Y in the chat if so. Okay, yep, so quite a few of you, this is good. And so um, these, of course, are the soul records of everything that we've done in this lifetime and others. So it has our records, not just on this planet, but every other planet and galaxy as well. So Julia, yes, but don't know what they are. Yep, so these are the soul records. So this thing of it like one giant library in the etheric or higher realm. So of like um, everything that we've done, like every choice, every action we've made and um, in this lifetime as well as others. So the Bible calls it the book of life. And it says at the end of the present age, the books will be open and read for judgment. Bible also describes it as the action of days, the end of the current program, and bringing in um, something anew. So what happens is we carry our karma across multiple lifetimes, and this is why we get past life recollections. So we can integrate our past lives into this lifetime and learn our lessons so not to repeat the same mistake again. So think of karmic loops like a virus in your system or your computer. So they're more like a virus or malware in your system. And like, well, it, it, it does shit that like is not supposed to happen. Um, well, it's like, it's like um, the law of karma really is like gravity or like radio waves. So it's so, I mean, it doesn't care about your concept of fair or unfair, what should happen. It's the way it is and you're accountable either way and whether you like it or not. And so it's the same with karmic imprints. Now, unless you're clearing your imprints, every choice you've made in this life, as well as others, including the choices of your parents and ancestors, directly affects you right now. So, I mean, uh, that's, so that's exactly what it does. Now, as the Holy Bible puts it, 
the sins of the fathers carried to the tenth generation. And, that's, and and even studies in epigenetics has proven that um our karma and what and like generational trauma, for example, can go as far back as twelve generations. So you are accountable for your sins. Now, sin, like not in the way that religion describes it, like as as a set of moral laws and like values, but um, is where you've missed the mark. So, um, because that um, that's the that's the true meaning of sin. When it's where you simply miss the mark, and where you fell out of alignment, and where you need to realign. So the law of karma is like gravity. It doesn't care about your concept of fair or unfair like we said. In other words, it's law, it's truth. You are accountable either way and you'll be judged for your actions when the book of life or Akashic records are opened. And well, karmic law is also backed by science because more and more scientists are now accepting the universe is one giant hologram. Um, that um, that with with quantum physics, um, uh, that is quantum physics teaching. There is a quantum realm which governs all things and overrides the material realm. So consciousness precedes matter, not the other way around, like it was um, the belief for a long time. So whatever we have going on in our consciousness, in our energy, is what will directly um, have um, effect, um, whether for the better or for the worse. Um, how our, how we are in our matter, in our physical world. So whatever is going on in our inner world is what will um, translate into the outer world. And in the holographic universe, Michael Talbot says, coffee cups, trees, table lamps might not exist in the way we believe them to exist. And uh, so um, in other words, it only, it only exists because we believe it's to be. So even the computer I'm using to do this webinar right now, it only exists because I believe it to be. And this is, was how Jesus was able to even do his miracles, for example, like walking on water, because he didn't see the um, ocean as liquid, but as, as a solid and transformed it into that with energy. And so that then he walked on water. And uh, he didn't view the water as, um, as wine, like at the wedding, but my, um, he didn't view the water as water at the wedding. What he did was he viewed it as wine and shifted it on the energy level. And Shirley, I recently connected with my great grandfather who was a painter. We lost the family link as his son disappeared and we never met him. But I have felt that my grandfather, great grandfather wants his paintings rediscovered and also this karma between him and his son healed. So I'm looking for his lost paintings. Mm, yes, um, that, and that'll be great. Like, and, um, and there's no reason you can't do some clearing around that, Shirley, for example, and then see what happens with how it plays out and just um, be guided by your intuition type of thing. Because that's the beauty too, as we clear our karma, that's where we also receive more clarity. So and your mind is like a radio transmitter which tunes into the radio stations of infinite realms of energy. Um, our thoughts create our reality. Not only that, but the collective consciousness of those around us affects our reality and others. So the scientific conclusions they came to were these. But traditional physics is no longer relevant. All things are interconnected on the energy consciousness level. Many a space and time do not exist. In other words, time isn't in a straight line, but we are in it, here in the now. So that so that's why um what happened in our lifetimes hundreds of years ago is relevant to now, because um on the energy level there is no such thing as time and space. It's it, all that matters is the now. And that things, objects are not localized. They're spread as one big giant hologram. And nothing exists until observed. Even etheric medicine is now discovering this as well. So etheric medicine and karma is what we'll go into next. 
in recent years, etheric medicine that is dealing with imprints, spears, or wounds in the etheric body has always been has been recognized as a way, powerful way to heal beyond your physical body. Once upon a time in the Western world, medicine only focused on healing the physical body, whereas in recent times, we have seen a greater awareness on mental health, psychology, and mind-body science. I'm sure you'd all agree. Um, so, in other words, the wisdom of the shamans is now in the West. What they've known for centuries is now finally mainstream. So, Ken Wilbur, um, in his book, um, Religion of Tomorrow, and Dr. Venus Williams, an author of PhD thesis on how etheric tears wounds and past life imprints manifest in the physical body. So basically um, these two um, teach on how um, the, the etheric tear wounds and past life imprints manifest physically. And they predict that the next phase of religion will be the growth of etheric medicine. And uh, we're basically seeing this right now. I mean, even the fact that they've even discovered with CBD oils, for example, how it can be used to treat things like PTSD and severe trauma, anxiety, amongst different issues such as those. And then Alberto Valdo. Dr. Alberto Valdo, an Amazon shaman, makes similar predictions. And he, and he himself is teaching the Western world the, the wisdom of the ancient medicine healers. So since the early 2000s, mental health and mind-body-spirit connection has become much more recognized, and we now have services for it. Psychologists and mental health assistants became more widely accepted mainstream, and it wasn't kind of pushed to the side or kind of looked at oddly anymore. So etheric medicine, meanwhile, has been developing quietly in the background and will become mainstream in the next 10, 15 years or so. The mind, body, and etheric um, all interrelate strongly. So we've seen a rapid growth in the last 20 years of practitioners or healers who use machines such as avatar and infoceuticals, which specialize in scouting the frequencies of the etheric body. And the, um, this helps to see imprints or other blockages about to enter the physical world to so be seen in your body. So this way, this gives you an unfair advantage almost, where you, where you can actually um, clear it out before it manifests physically and before uh, it manifests as an illness or um, a loss in a business or finance or something terrible. But Harold, Harold Hoxie in the 1930s was actually curing cancer using such devices. Julia, I am an Eden energy medicine practitioner. Well, there you go. And like, there's a lot to see. There's a lot more people like you, Julia, around now. There's a lot. Um, uh, if you're a naturopath or like an energy medicine practitioner, you won't kind of be seen oddly or weirdly, but where people will recognize it as a normal thing now. I'm sure, and of course, there'll still be some who will see it strange, but not to the, to the degree that it used to be. And so we are seeing an explosion of healers who know how to repair the or etheric or auric body. However, this is still quite a relatively untapped area full of opportunity for those on the cutting edge. So anything not cleared from the etheric will eventually manifest into the physical. So what do I mean about anything unresolved or not dealt with etherically will manifest in the physical? Let's explain a bit further. If the imprint is not cleared from your etheric body by energy, healing, homeopathics, or some other means, it, you'll, inevitably it will result in disease, illness, accident, injury, or something catastrophic in your life. So Louise Hay's book, for example, You Can Heal Your Life, gives quite a bit of insight into this area. She gave a very long list of the illnesses and the metaphysics of how all of it worked. So some examples on her website include the following. So back issues, for example, represents the support of life. 
So like feeling a lack of support or not accepting the support that you need and anything like that. That's a deep hurt, long-standing resentment, deep secret or grief eating away at the self, carrying a lot of hatreds. And that legs um, carry us forward in life and what where are we holding back from? And anxiety, not trusting the flow and the process of life and getting stuck in your own head and your own way of thinking. And fatigue, um, resistance, boredom, lack of love for what one does. Asthma, this one is an interesting one. Bill McRae um, actually um, has proved that it's caused by a smothering mother. And what he did, like as soon as parents would bring him um, to get um, to get um, healed from asthma, the first all he would say is, um, "Give me the um, um, no, um, give me the mother for three months, and the child will be healed." Um, and so, so that, and sure enough, it um, it succeeded every time without fail, because the the asthma. I mean, what what does it? Well, you, it's that constriction of breathing and that smothering going on because the mother is being overly smothering and overly concerned. And so so what that meant was that Bill McRae helped the mother heal from her shit because basically, I mean, um, a child in their early years um, is going to just be a sponge of, for programming, for conditioning and picking up whatever their parents do, especially the mother. And uh, so that was why Bill McRae would get the mother, because as soon as she was healed, then the child's asthma would go. And then neck pain. And then and the neck pain is like around inflexibility and the, not seeing what's back there. And uh, kind of like, um, and keeping yourself stubborn. And eczema is linked to mental, mental eruptions and, and, and huge inner conflict. And then the gallbladder or liver is like extreme rage, particularly around the father. So Sally, neck pain, flexible, stubborn. Yeah, exactly. So when you're being inflexible and when you're being stubborn to change. So now um, that will that brings us to clearing your karma. So before we do that, um, uh, um, has uh, just type in the text chat. Um, uh, uh, what what struggle you've experienced in life, whether it's like neck pain, whether it's been like um, liver, or whether it's been anxiety or anything like that. So, Andreas, um, uh, neck and back pain. Julia, diabetes. Because then the other thing uh, is that you, you you look exactly at what the what the purpose of the body the bodily function is where you have that struggle. So like cancer, for example, what does it do? It eats away at you within. So of course, like and the, with cancer, they they tend to find that the patients were nice people who never spoke their truth, and they then they let shit eat away at them inside. And Sarah, before I got into healing 14 years ago, I had gallbladder removed. Yeah, and that's a very big one. And that actually happens quite a bit more often than people would think. Um, Christine, hip pain. Um, Carolina, hem hemochromatosis, blood disease. And the Sarah, yes, I lost my gall, my power. And Jackie, back pain, anxiety, numbness in lower legs, fatigue. Gudrun, neck, back, Lyme, cognitive, many accidents and injuries, Julia, information. Yeah, so this is interesting. Quite a few um, back pains here and, and a few necks. So, um, um, well, and that would make sense. I mean, because, well... Oh, especially in this Western world where, like, we've lost that connection, or um, basically... And where everyone's kind of out for themselves and individualism instead of like um instead of operating as a community as one unit type of thing because behind any society is when we still have our independence because we still need to be our own person but where but but within a community community where we can support and help one another and without any conditions or strings attached 
So, and then I myself um, have struggled with eczema, for example. And uh, so then that during that time, that was when I had a lot of mental eruptions mm -hmm. going on and a lot of um, inner conflicts emotionally and were carrying a lot of anger. So then clearing your karma. Um, so why must I release my karma? What happens if I don't? Let's look into this. It's simple. You're bound to keep repeating the same karmic loops until you solve it and it gets worse each time. It's best to deal with your karma in your current life. Otherwise, it becomes much worse in your next lifetime. Why? Because you're born without memory of your past life, so you must unlock it. And this gets harder each time. Even worse is if you don't be your karma at all, because there are multiple energetic layers of soul dungeons where people actually go to work out their karma. So you see this not only in the Holy Bible, but in other ancient texts. It's not a nice place, and it's far better to clear your karma. So almost like a literal hell. So um, the, and the next one is our five-step karmic release process. The first one is acknowledgement of universal laws. So um, the, the first step is to acknowledge the universal laws, that they're there and to honour them. The second one is to learn the universal laws, so um, don't be ignorant to them. The third one is to map out where you're out of alignment. So meaning that you dive deep and you let the, you allow it to come to you and you map it out. Fourth step is to make it right in some way. Then, the, um, so where you do your clearing and, uh, and uh, do what you're, and basically let the masters guide you on how to make it right. And then the fifth step is to put steps in place to ensure that it doesn't happen again. So we have a bit of a karmic checklist here. So, um, uh, so I mean, uh, you've got um, people you owe money to and haven't paid them back, people you ripped off in business or money, e.g. friends, clients, family members, promises to yourself you haven't kept. So, like, um, you can either write this down or, like, take a screenshot for the karmic checklist. Um, put on, so, like, a diet you promise to do, goals or resolutions you made for yourself then the fourth one unfulfilled or broken vows marriage vows promises to others e.g soulmates forever vows to help someone financially religious or spiritual orders or secret societies and pacts so i.e formal agreements to ruin or undermine someone in business family members against one another and ways for extravagance with money and self-pleasure, proving you can't be trusted to manage money wisely. Seventh one, practicing dark arts, so like dark witchcraft, sorcery, putting curses or hexes on people, imagining the hateful dark thoughts against another for their ruin and meaning it and causing a direct impact, oppressing, extorting or bullying others. Fiving or humanitarian giving, so we are called to give beyond ourselves to a higher purpose. And when, when we fail to tithe or otherwise give beyond ourselves, it brings a curse. And the tenth one is speaking a truth. So not speaking your own truth consistently, deliberately lying or telling falsehood for your own selfish ends, not allowing others to speak their truth. Being in a blame cycle with others for your struggles, having a victim or complaining mentality, going off path and making money your primary pursuit rather than doing what your soul agreement or life mission is on the planet, misuse of sexual energy, e.g. manipulating someone sexually for your own ends, withholding sexual energy from a partner, not being fully truthful, or anything else which jumps out at you. So if you didn't get all that, you can always watch the replay when it's available and then uh, um, write it down or take the screenshots. So um, karma is very much in uh, linked in our chakras as well, because, well, the first chakra is the root, which is basic trust survival. So in other words, if you have karma there, it means you, that means that you have issues around survival and the sacral would mean you have karma around sex and creativity. The third one that would be wisdom and power. Fourth one is love and healing, so heartbreak or um, closing the heart. The fifth one, communication, speaking a truth. 
six one your awareness your clarity um and then the seventh one of course is um the crown chakra and your or your spirituality your connection to the cosmic realm okay so before we get into the clearing does anyone have any questions or comments Jackie, no, thank you. Julia, no. Sarah, all good so far, thanks. Yeah, no worries. What I'll do now is I'll turn off the video um, just so it removes all, um, any distractions from the clearing. Alexandra, no, I'm ready for the clearing. Awesome. Well, I certainly am too. Okay, so we'll now be so we'll, we'll now begin the clearing, everyone. So I'm um, now just focus on this code and inhale it to your sixth chakra, your third eye, and the rest of your chakras. Just imagining it there and closing your eyes, and just start to um uh, inhale through your nose for a count of four. Hold it for a count of four and exhale through the mouth for a count of six to eight. And just repeat that breathing process to relax your mind and your body. We'll take a quick minute or so to do this. We now call upon the golden vortex and the, and the spinning tornado going clockwise and the bright white crystalline pyramid surrounding me and each person here. And we call upon the five archangels, Uriel, Gabriel, Raphael, Michael and Metatron. And Christ and Mother Mary and Babaji, Melchizedek, so only those who are aligned with the Word of God and the Christ consciousness. And we clear and repel any false spirit guides, negative energies, outside interferences, unhelpful entities, or anything else related to be fully cleared out now. And we give love, thanks, and gratitude to all beings that are currently present. It is commanded by the laws of the golden liquid realms and our chemical powers that this higher moksha clearing code be used to clear um, any karmic imprints from each person here from their first chakra around survival. <laughs> So clear, clearing the karmic imprints from past lives, from this life, and inherited karma from parents and ancestors. So clearing any around the first chakra of survival, basic trust, and or clear any from the sacral around sex and creativity, from the third chakra around self power, self esteem, from the fourth chakra around uh, love and trust. From the fifth chakra around speaking their truth from the sixth chakra around awareness and clarity and from the seventh chakra around the cosmic realm the connection of the cosmic universe
and they clear out the twisted energy patterns, that is the karmic imprints, and clear the erraticness from each person's system and restore them back into alignment within themselves and with the flow of the universe and um, the, and restore their connection to the cosmic, to the cosmos and to God and the higher beings. We clear the corruption from the DNA of each person here and the dark energies and frequencies burning up the golden liquid light and clear any curses or hexes or spells. <coughs> and send any back place by witches or wizards back to them, set back to them sevenfold to receive their judgment justly earned now. We now infuse the divine love and higher frequencies into each person here justly earned now to Asia in today. They remove any discarnates by providing a third order escort, contain them if they resist, and transport them to the astral planes justly earned now. And clearing the, the programming, the conditioning um, from around the karma, and clear any ids or traumas, bring back the golden soul fragments justly earned now. help each person here to feel, process and release any fears or anxieties about the future or created from karma or others related or any anger or sadness, helping them to feel, process and release it and we, we now rebalance each person here in all areas of life, pour in the golden liquid light and send in the love from the higher mother and father. Okay, so how's everyone feeling after the clearing? Sarah, very peaceful and relaxed. Excellent, Sarah. Great to see that you're very peaceful and relaxed. Lisa, light and happy, thank you so much. Yep, no worries. That's great, Lisa. Glad you're feeling that. Carolina, balanced. Shirley, very calm and light. Andreas, relaxed and light. Excellent. Great to, great to see you guys feeling more light and more in alignment again. Tachi, very light and serene. Alexandra, I feel much lighter. Thank you. Yeah, no worries, Andrea.
we can certainly thank these higher beings for um, continuing to give these healings and these activations. So, um, Chris, Christine, uh, good, thanks, William. Uh, I can't really define what happened, but it seemed very powerful. Yeah, that's awesome, Christine. And, and yeah, I certainly agree, it was powerful. Andreas, thank you very much, William. That's right, Andreas. Susanna, balanced and released. Sachi, thank you, William. And Christine, yes, I felt there was a presence there. No worries, Sachi. And yes, I felt the strong presence too, Christine. And Shirley, thanks very much for this. Yeah, that's all right. I mean, I'm sure we can all agree that it's certainly needed in the world right now. It's, um, it's certainly time we love and respect one another instead of being in each other's throats. Godron, thank you. I drifted off. Um, but no, something happened. Yeah, that's awesome, Godron. And Sarah, very timely. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. Okay, so now everyone just have a glass of water to integrate the clearing. Okay, so any final questions or comments before we end for today? Sarah, so grateful. That's great, Sarah. All right, so I'm going to say everyone say hello to Warren. He just made a surprise appearance. Hey, everyone. And, uh, Theo, thanks, William. Lisa, no, but thanks for your service. And Christine, all good, thanks. So Sarah says, hello, Warren. <laughs> Julia, thanks, William. Hi, Warren. Godron, I really enjoyed this. Thank you, William. Yep, no worries. Glad you enjoyed it. And Shirley, I felt very sad earlier in the week about what's happening in the world. This has helped me be happier about the future. Yeah, well, that's very powerful, Shirley. I mean, because well, we, we, we all have those moments, but... Um, when we just um, when we do things like these, and when we give to each other, that's when it can bring that hope, and that's when it can bring that meaning. Yep. So Sally, talk about undoing, please. Um, can it be easy to undo? Um, yes, it can. So like anything, really, it depends on your level of dedication and commitment to undoing and clearing it, really. Okay, so um, ju just before we end, uh, um, uh, if, um, if, if anyone is interested... Um, I'm actually, I, I actually, um, am planning to, if we have, if we have a large enough group to, um, to do some kind of karmic clearing, like, um, a program or some kind of like proper or some kind of proper teaching and actual clearings and activations on it. So, so if you're, so if you're interested just in that, um, feel free to send me an email at william at the awakening within dot net or just message our support team and then we'll get back to you. So just type a Y um, if any, if you would be interested in something like that. So, and so Andreas, yes. Gudgeon, yep. Carolina, yes. Okay, great. Excellent. Awesome to see so many people interested. Yep. Yep. So, um, uh, all right. So, um, so now from here, what we'll do is we'll end it for today. And those that are interested, just feel free to send us an email and then we'll get back to you and uh, we'll figure it out from there. So thanks, everyone. So I hope you'll have a great rest of your day, evening, wherever it is you are. Take care of yourselves and uh, we'll see you all next time. Bye for now.